Hi students, Logan Phillips here. All right, today we're going to be talking about Microsoft Access Chapter 3 Guided Project. So at this point, we've worked with a variety of ways on our relationship management database systems. We've organized some of our data, we've converted it, sorted it, filtered it, made the relationships between different tables and data. So we're going to jump into a little bit more advanced at this point. So let's go into our submit environment and find our Microsoft Access Chapter 3 project. So I'm going to search for it real quick. And we have the Chapter 2, Chapter 3, Guide to Project 3-2. All right, so we have a couple of different files here. We have the instruction file for the Windows 2013-16, and we have our start file. So let's get them both. Okay, let's open up our instruction file, and let's open up our database. Now, for this particular assignment, we have a few different uh, project or <coughs> outcomes that we're going to be working with. We're going to be creating a query using Design View. We're going to add some fields to that query. We're going to edit, add criteria to the query. We're going to execu execute it. We're going to save and test it. We're going to save a copy of it. We're going to add a parameter. We're going to use an aggregate function, and we're going to use some unique value properties. So when we're talking about databases and these type of things, a query, which I know I'm mispronouncing, I had a bad speech impediment when I was a kid, and I'm saying quarry is not something that's very easy for me. So forgive my modification. A query is the best I can do. It's where we're at. So ask, a query is just asking your data questions. It is looking at it and say, I need information. I need answers. And so we're going to ask a bunch of different answers, ask for a bunch of different answers from our database. So let's go ahead and open up that database. We're going to hit enable content. And as always, the very first thing I do is save it onto my desktop. So we hit File, Save As. We're going to go to Desktop, leave the same name, and re-enable that content. <coughs> All right, so we're working with a, a basic database here. And we have at least two uh, tables. We have a cell boat fleet and an SD rentals. If we open them up, uh, we can look at them very quickly, see what's there. We got rental IDs, boat IDs. Uh, so SD Rentals, we have a primary key of rental ID on cell boat fleet, primary key of boat ID. And I imagine if you look through here, we got member numbers and something probably going to be close to it as well. A boat ID. So our, our alternative key is our boat ID. That's the key that's going to be between the two of them for our relationship. All right. So let's jump into our assignment and look at the steps. So we've already done step one. We've opened up the assignment, we've opened up the access database, we've checked our name, and we've enabled the content. So we're on to step four at that point. So just opening it, that's three steps inside this assignment. Now, on to step four, we're going to create a new summary query in the design view. And so we're going to be working with the selling club wants to find our total dollar value at the full day rentals by boat, from the boats that have been rented, and if a boat has been rented, there is a, should be a record of it. So let's go ahead and click on our Query Design button, which is our Create tab. And we have different groups. You know, we've been working in the tables, Create Tables from either Design Viewer Tables. Now we're going to jump into the Queries grouping. And we're going to create a query from the Create Design. So this is building it up our cell. <coughs> so we're going to select the Cell Boat Fleet table. Click Cell Boat Fleet and hit Add. And close that down. And we're going to add the SRT table. So I should have added one more table here. Now, since I had added too quickly, I made a quick, easy mistake. I'm just going to right click in the gray spot and I'm going to come down here to show tables and open that menu back up. And in show tables, I also want to throw in our SD rentals. So because this is a relationship database, we have a one-to-many relationship, we can actually ask questions from multiple tables inside Excel, not just from the individuals. <coughs> so we are on step four, and we have gone down through step E now. So here we're going to increase the size of the table objects to display all of the fields. Uh, we're going to click the drop-down arrow in the first field row cell of the query design grid and select SD Rental. And it's going to be KF Boat ID. So we got SD Rental KF Boat ID. We're going to click on the second cell and we're going to add SD Cell Boat Fleet Boat Type. So Cell Boat Fleet 
vote type. Now you can see here we have this field name. So we're creating a different question for uh, the Access Database right now. And so I'm just clicking on them one at a time. I could have came up here. Uh, let's extend these out a little bit. And just double clicked on them as I needed. But they wanted you to go specifically through the drop down menus. In our third cell, we are going to do a drop down and we're going to choose the sailboat fleet full day rental rate. Sailboat fleet and full day rental rate. There we go. On the fourth cell, we're going to do SD rentals four hour rental. So drop down, SD rentals four hour rental. So again, I have just gone through clicking the individual ones to insert these inside of our given query. <clears throat> Next, we're going to click on the totals button, which is inside the query design tab, and it says show hide groups. And so we're in here on the design tab, and on the right hand side, we have the show hide, and we're going to insert a totals. Now what this does is inside of our query, right below the table, it's going to insert a totals grouping so we can group these into different styles of totals. Then let's go ahead and run this query and see what comes up. So again, design tab, left hand side in the results, we're going to run. So you can see here I've asked this query and or I've asked this database a question. What kind of boats, boat IDs, full day rentals and who has a four hour rental? So it comes through and it tells me, you know, uh, Catalina 270, boat ID 110, has a four hour rental and it's $179 for a full day rate. So we can start getting really specific questions from multiple tables. <coughs> All right. Okay, the next step we're going to be doing is modifying some aggregate functions here. Uh, because we're only looking for rentals that were for a full day, we're going to use the no value on the four hour rental field. So we're going to click on the view button and we're going to go back into that design view. So let's go up here. We have view, SQL view, and design view. And so we're going to modify this a little bit to only do a certain very specific manner. <clears throat> we're going to click on the total row for the full day rental rate field. So we have four hour full day rental rate. And we're going to click the drop down arrow and we're going to select the sum. So let's go to total row, full day rental rate. Instead of group by, we're going to come down here and we're going to choose a sum function. So these functions work very much, are very similar to the way that they work inside Microsoft Excel. But this is how Access Database can do mathematics a little bit. It is a little restricted, and it does take a very different mindset than a lot of the other ex our Office products. But you can do mathematics here when you're asking questions of your data. Next, we're going to click on the total row for the four-hour rental field, and we're going to choose it. Select where, so four-hour rental. We're going to choose that total field, and we're going to choose where. Uh, this causes the show row checkbox for the four-hour rental field to be deselected. <clears throat> now, we're going to click next on the criteria row for the cell for the four-hour rental, and we're going to enter the word no. So we come down here, and we have the criteria, and we're going to come to criteria, and we're going to click on, or just type in the word no. Now, once it does this, it's going to automatically return a function for us. If it hits on this now, and it keeps trying to insert that, just hit the escape button and it will go away. <coughs> All right, so let's go ahead and run this again and see what comes up. Now notice that I've summed up my full day rental rates and I only wanna show if it's a no on us, it's rented right now. So it's hidden in that four hour rental column because it's unchecked. So I'm gonna go back here and see the show is unchecked. And so now I have a sum of value that it's been rented for. Yes, it's been rented. No, it's been not rented for four hours. And how much money we're asking or getting for this full hour, full, uh, full day rental. All right, let's go back. All right, so now we're going to save this because we want this question has been asked. Uh, we want to save the information so we can give it to other people. 
So we're going to click on the Save button, and we're going to save it as a full day rental by boat summary. So file, I'm sorry, save. We're going to name this full day rentals by boat. Make sure you spell it right. Summary. And don't put in the period. The period does not go in here. It says OK. Now, we're going to verify next that the query works correctly. We're going to open up the SD rental table in data sheet view. So let's go ahead and SD rentals. We're going to right click on it and we're going to choose to click on open. And we're going to click on the drop down arrow in the boat ID field name cell. So let's go here, boat ID field name. And here we are going to sort this from A to Z. Now, so we're putting in alphabetical or alphanumerical order, which means one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D, so on and so. So we've sorted it from A to Z, and we are now on to step 7D. We're going to click the drop down arrow in the four hour rental name cell, and we're going to select the sort cleared to select option. So let's go here to the four hour rental. We're going to use our radio button on the right hand side, and we're going to select sort cleared to selected. Okay. And so we can see here that boat ID 1010 has a total of five full day rentals. So we can see here boat five, one, two, three, four, five. So there's five of these right here. One, two, three, four, five. So five of these guys have a full day rental. And at $179 a piece times five gives us an $895 for boat 1010 of our complete summary. So if we come over here, boat 1010, $895. Our data matches up between the two of these. All right, next we're gonna remove these sort buttons from the home tab. So the home tab, sort and filter. Let's go ahead and remove our sorts. And <clears throat> we're gonna close the SD rental table. So that's really just showing you that. And we're not gonna save it, okay. The, the data does match up. So we could have gone through and hand calculated all that, or we could ask the table to give us the information we're wanting. And that's what databases really are, to ask really complex questions so that we don't have to do everything by hand. It is extremely capable and more so than Microsoft Excel, but it does take a little finagling. So at this point, we are on to step eight, and we're gonna save a copy of the query, and we're gonna click on the Save As button, and save object as. So, save as, save the object as, and we are going to click it as a suggested name, full day rental boat summary with parameter. Okay, let's click on that save as button, and we're going to name this full day rental, rentals, Make sure you spell everything correctly. By boat summary with parameter. Remember to leave off that period. Okay, and we're gonna allow this. And hit OK. So what we've done is we've created a second summary. Our second query, we had the full day rental boat summary. And now we have a full day rentals uh, boat summary with parameter. So we're going to modify this query a little bit so that they can actually put in a little bit of date ranges and get specific information about the, the, the stuff. So we're going to edit this query. We're going to click on the view tab or the view button, which is the home tab, views group, and we're going to choose design view. So home tab, and we're going to go into our design view. Right. And so this design view looks a little different than our tables design view because it has that relationship up top, but it's still just how things need to look versus actually working with the data itself. So we're on to step nine here. And we're going to start moving some items around. We're going to drag down the full day rental rate field from the cell boat fleet table. So let's go here to the cell boat fleet table and the full day rental rate. I'm going to click with my left mouse button and drag it all the way down to the bottom and fifth column in the query. One, two, three, four, and right there. 
So we got, we've got we dragged it down directly from the fifth column. So we've seen two, day, two ways I can do this now. I can do the drop down menu and choose it from the list, or I can physically click on it and drag and hold and drag it down. So <coughs> we are now into the, a step 9D, uh, 9C. We're going to click on the total row for the cell field and the drop down arrow, and we're going to select count here. So we get them up to the total row, and instead of group by, we're going to choose to do count. And from count, we are also going to put in a little bit of a modification. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to go into the rental date field from SD Tables. Let's go over here, rental date, and we're going to drag it down to the sixth column. So let's go down to, now again, I dragged that from the SD Rentals table down to the sixth column in my design view. And from the sixth column, I'm going to go into my total field, and I'm going to choose this as a where. Now, this causes the show row checkbox for the rental thing to be deselected. So we're going to be able to put in a query or a qu criteria for this, but it's not going to show on the when we run it. You won't see a new column with this because it's unselected. And we're going to click on the criteria cell here, and we're going to make a unique criteria requirement. And now this is a SD rental rate dates, so of course it's going to be a requirement of certain date ranges. And <clears throat> so from here, we are going to come down to this criteria. We are going to right click on it and we're going to choose zoom. Now what zoom does is zoom in onto that one particular cell so that we have a bigger area to create our individual formulas. And so inside zoom, we're going to start writing out this given formula. And we're going to type in the words between the square bracket, make sure it's a square bracket, Enter the start date, close our square bracket, space, and open square bracket, enter the end date, and close that square bracket. So the bracket system here tells uh, Access that they're going to be entering in something. This is a user input field. So it's going to say between this date and this date is the information I'm wanting. And we're going to click OK. And you can see now here below, our information has been entered, and between enter the date, enter the date. Let's go ahead and save this query, top left corner. I made it twice, and let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. It's going to go run. And you can see it's popped up with a question. What is your start date? So let's put in 2-1-2017. It's going to pop up with a next parameter. It's going to say, well, what is your end date? And so we're going to put in 2-28-2017. Hit OK. So now we've asked the database a question of not just, you know, how much is the full sum amount of money I'm getting for certain boats, but how much money am I getting for certain boats between this date and this date? So we're getting more and more advanced questions with every little bit of tweak that we do to this access database. And let's go ahead and hit Save. And so let's review this query next. So we've gone through all through step 10G at this point. You should have 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, starting with 1010 going to 1185 um, on your query results. And now we're going to review this query. We're going to reopen the query in Design View. So Home tab. We're going to click on Views, and we're going to go back into our Design View. And we're going to notice that the access has reordered the position of the fields. And so everything's sort of modified around here a little bit. Or, if you're like me, Access didn't modify your fields like it should have. What could have happened to your Access database here is everywhere it has one of these where fields, it should have moved it to the far right. If it didn't, that's fine. If it did, that's also fine. It doesn't actually change the way the data sheet runs or the query runs at all. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. Uh, I'm sorry, that's Microsoft Access in a nutshell. All right, so let's just go ahead and close this query out. So let's hit close. And next on step 12, we're going to create a new query in Design View. The Selling Club wants to find out what, bo bo what boat types have been rented so it can decide whether to adjust pricing or marketing on some of its boat types. If a boat has been rented, a record of that rental exists in the SD Rentals table. 
So let's go ahead and click on the Query Design button. So we're going to go up to our Create tab. We're going to go into our Queries grouping and click on the Query Design button. And again, I apologize for mispronouncing this word. I, it's who I am. <clears throat> and then we're going to select the SD Rentals table. And then we're going to hit the Shift key. And we're going to select the Sailboat Fleet as well. And let's go ahead and add them both together and close out that show tables. Now I'm going ahead and extend these out uh, to show all the individual pieces in them. Uh, but, and I'm going to move it over so you can see that it is a one to many relationship, one boat ID uh, to possible many people renting that boat. Uh, we are now on to step 12D. We're going to click on the drop down arrow in the first field row and we're going to put in SD Reynolds FK boat ID. So let's do the drop down menu, SD Reynolds, FK, Boat ID. And we're going to click Sort Row, and we're going to do a drop down arrow and select Ascending. So let's go ahead and do our sort, and we're going to put those in ascending order. Next on step 12F, we're going to click the second cell, and we're going to choose Cell Boat Fleet Body Type. So let's do Cell Boat Fleet, and we're going to do Body Type. And let's run this and see what happens. You can see here now we have by boat ID uh, in ascending order from top to bottom or one, two, three, four, or ABC order. And then you can see the body types in, in every individual of those orders uh, 110 being Catalina 270, 1015, uh, 1146 being 133, and so forth. Now, you should notice here that there's a number of instances for the same boat ID. Like boat 1010 has happened repeatedly times, and that's because boat 1010 has been rented multiple times. So we're going to edit this query to display only unique values. Like, while this is good and answers my question, it's not quite good enough. I don't want to see 1010, 1010, 1010, 1010 over and over again. I want to see just unique instances of where things happen. So let's go back into that design view. Home tab, left side design view and we're going to go down here into our design view we're going to click on the property sheet button which is in the quarry tab design tab so we got quarry tab and we have the design tab and we're looking for that property sheet in the show hide group now once you've opened that it's going to open up a new navigation on the right hand side which is your property sheet and so we're going to modify some information inside here so we're going to go to that show hide group we've got the show hide group, clicked on property sheet, opened it up, and we're going to click anywhere in this query window so that the selection type in the data sheet displays all the query properties. So you can see here, instead of selecting on one boat sheet, or the boat type, I'm selecting in the gray area anywhere in the middle so nothing is selected, so it shows my property sheet for the entire query instead of individual pieces. So once it's been selected, I've the whole thing instead of individual pieces, I'm going to go in and I'm going to click and change it to a unique values. So we're going to click on the unique values property box and we're going to select yes. So let's find here the unique values. All right, it's one, two, three, four, five levels down. And right hand side, we're going to switch from no and we're going to change it to yes. Let's go ahead and next close that property sheet. You can either hit the X or you can come up here and hit the tab and close it down. And let's run this query again. Now what should happen is we have unique values only. There we go. 110, 1015, 1146. So you can see how many different types of boats are rented and what their boat numbers are according to those. So there's at least two boats with a Catalina 270. There's 123, blah, blah, blah. So on step 14, we're almost done here. We're going to edit the query so that the boat type displays only once. Now the boat type is displaying more than once because FK boat ID field is different for each boat. So let's go ahead and go back into our design view. And we're going to click on the sort row of the FK boat field ID. And we're going to choose that drop down. And we're going to choose the not sorted list. Okay. And let's go ahead and deselect the show but box for boat FX boat ID. And let's run this one more time. 
So we have a Benetton 373, we have a Capri 22 Mark II, we have a Catalina 270, 133, and 136. These are the boats we have for rent. So let's save this button. And we're going to save this query as the boat types rented. Now, the reason this would be useful information and not just unusable, like I say, they may have 10 boats, but these are the ones of those 10 boats that have been rented. So they can compare that to the rest of our boats and start marketing for the ones that are unrented. You could have done the same type of transformation to find out the boats that aren't rented and go from there. Um, but you can ask the question in multiple ways and get different types of answers that will eventually lead to you fixing your issue or making more money for your company, those type of stuff. So let's hit as boat types rented, hit OK. And we're going to go ahead and close this query. And then let's upload it and see what type of score we got. So I've closed down the access database. I'm coming over here. I'm going to upload my file. I've saved it to my desktop. So let's go ahead and find it real quick. Sailing database three. Hit open. Now, of course, you know, if your instructor is not an idiot, I would have made 100%. But let's see what kind of score I got. And we got 100%. So, see, I don't always make mistakes, but sometimes I do. And I'll always admit to those when I do. If you follow along with this, the queries are just ways of asking questions of your data. Now, this type of stuff can get a whole lot more advanced and a whole lot more special. Uh, we can make fields and answers and we can make handouts and all kinds of really cool stuff. Now, I get into that in my advanced access classes. Um, if you'd like to follow through or if you'd like to learn a bit more about access, I'll gladly share out with you on the uh, above and beyond section of Blackboard. Just let me know. All right, I hope this helps. We've got covered uh, access one, two, and three at this point. Uh, you've done data tables. You've done relationships. You've done queries. You've sorted and filtered. You've done a lot of stuff with your data to make yourself a little bit more advanced. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. I am here to help. I am your professor. Have a very good day. Have a very fruitful day.